Land tax is a very popular card in EDH because white does not white does not have a lot of options for ramp, and land tax keeps a lot of cards in the hand. If you don't know what land tax is, allow me to tell you. For one white, land tax is an enchantment, which at the beginning of your turn, if an opponent controls more lands than you, beginning of your upkeep, not turn, tomato, potato, if, they, if somebody else controls more lands at you at the beginning of your upkeep, then you may search your library. You may search, you don't have to if you don't want to, and you may search up to three basic land cards and put them into your hand. It can be one, two. So, <clears throat> in each, it's really hard to get land out in mono white deck. So it's basically an auto include for every EDH deck that has white in it. But for Oathbreaker, the deck sizes are a lot smaller, 60 instead of 30, 99 versus 58, so almost half it means you need you can have half or less as much ramp. So if you get this out on turn one, let's say, somebody else went before you, then following that in your next rotation, you can just fold your hand up with lands. If your opponent makes you want to discard cards, you can just discard lands because you always get more lands next turn. Using a land tax keeps your hand full, so that's good. Plus, if you have more cards in your hand, then your opponents can't tell if you got something or not. But if you're sitting there with one card in hand and people aren't so concerned with you, so it makes you look more threatening on the visuals, but it does keep you all constantly hitting your land drops. In modern, we have cards that like, oh, if you miss your land drop on a turn, it's basically over for you because it's gone. That's why they want like fast lands or some there, the pain lands. Honestly, they're very important in modern because it's so fast. Oathbreaker is not as fast as that, but it is faster than EDH where people would play the regular lands that come in tapped to be like Woodland Stream. That's green and white and comes into play tapped. Like that is questionable in Oathbreaker if you really want to maybe like combo off and turn four or something. Anyway, how's it going? Back to... <laughs> Back to land tax. So, I just told you, okay, if you have a lot of cards in your hand that's threatening and you do want to hit your land drops because it's faster than EDH. Where even in EDH, people are really bummed out when they don't hit their land drops. So land tax will keep you on curve, give you all the lands you need, keep your hand full, making you look threatening. And so, Having the correct number of lands is important so you can activate your spells as you want. I'm fairly certain that most people, when they're introduced to magic, play some, maybe some kind of mid-range deck, like the typical uh, Planeswalker decks, where the Planeswalkers are I-5 and the 6 CMC. For me, Nisa Genesis Mage was the first, and I got my little brother Liliana, the one from Amonkhet. And those are pretty high, yeah, you want to... As the game progresses, then you'll be able to summon it because there's a lot more higher costed cards than low costed cards. In order to reach that, you'll want to hit your lands every single turn because if you fall behind, then your opponent gets to put down a big spell that you couldn't put down because you missed it. And that really hurts. So land tax will keep the cards in hand. I can't make that seem any more important because it's so important. It's like you would you rather keep a hand with no lands or a hand that's only lands? Probably the hand with only lands because then if you draw something, you'll probably be able to use it. But if you have a card, a full, a handful of stuff, then you're gonna be like, ooh, this is a really good hand. And it's good because you can use all of it if there was any lands in there. So always at least a personal rule of mine, I have to have a minimum of two lands and I must be able to at least summon one thing on turn two or one and then I'll say, okay, but if I only have like two lands and maybe there's a three drop, I might consider mulliganing. And now with the London mulligan, that makes it a lot easier. If you don't know what the London mulligan is, you draw seven cards. If you don't like it, you draw seven cards again, and then you take one of the cards that you drew, put it on the bottom of your library. And if you still don't like any of those cards, then you draw seven cards again, and put 
two cards on the bottom of your library, so you can really pick and choose what cards to keep all the way down to like one, or maybe you just don't want a hand at all. That sounds really interesting, playing Magic the Gathering, beginning the game with no hand. I'm gonna try that. So, I hope you learned something, a little something about land tax. It's very important. And the good part is that there's some a lot of artifacts that ramp out turn two. Let's say a lot of turn two mana torques. If your gold mirror produces a white mana, if you're doing a mono white jet like a Johnny or Gideon, so that's very important. And if you have land tax out, uh, you only really need like four mana ramps spells in your deck really to get going and you'll want those to be turn one and two and i don't think you'll really have a lot of turn one mana ramp spells in oathbreaker and nine of the white orchid is a very popular card to get you doing the same thing like land tax and that comes out turn two so i would encourage that one as well there you go three Land Tax, Gold Mirror, Nine of the White Orchid. Let's find one more. Let's see. Uh, Plague Mirror. Nah, nobody likes Infect. Wayfarer's Bauble. If you want that, it comes out on turn one, turn two. You pay two, tap it, sack it, and you get a basic land put into play. Tap, tap that counts as ramp. The other ones, they just keep you on your land drop, but this ramps you. So play, play Wayfarer's Bauble. And I hope this helps you a lot. Thank you for watching and goodbye.